I really doubt that BPN will mandate that every doctor participate in the ACO. Um, but I can't say that for sure right now. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. um, can you help me understand that, that some of the, and I know there's a lot of information still to come, but what are the key differences between this and, and a regular HMO? The government? Really, it all, but they come with yeah. more power. Right, right. It is very similar to dealing with the Medicare HMOs um, because there is a lot of quality reporting and, and different things, and <laughs> analyzing data and so on that goes on. Um, and you are, there are two models of risk for the first three years of, of an ACO. You can become a full risk model, which means that if you have savings, you get 50% of those savings actually 60% if you do this model, you would get 60% of those savings back to you as a bonus. Um, if you do kind of a half and half model where for the first two years, you're not at risk to pay back Medicare, but you could receive bonuses. But then in the third year, you would become at risk to pay back Medicare if you went over the threshold. Um, and then you get 50% of the savings. The catch with that though also is that you have to have a deficit reserve fund in case you go over your benchmark and you owe money back to Medicare. You have to create a deficit reserve fund so that you have, you have money available to pay them back. So that could take your bonuses for the first few years if you qualify for bonuses. It could take those bonuses to actually create that deficit fund. So you're, you're looking a few, possibly a few years out before you're really seeing any monetary benefit and the way it's written right now. Is, is so that, it's a little bit scary. Is that being paid by the ACO as a whole, or is it going to fall on each actual provider? To it would it would come at, from the the actual infrastructure for the ACO would come from BPN funds, some somehow some way. <laughs> <laughs> um, now the the money to pay back a deficit. Yes, basically would come out of all of the doctor's pockets that are within the ACO because um, everyone would be responsible for creating that deficit reserve fund. So that is, if there is a deficit, there's money to pay back that deficit to Medicare. Um, how exactly that's going to work, I don't right, know. Once again, don't know. It could be a letter of credit that the ACO could hold, um, you know, and, and there's lots of different possibilities for that deficit fund. Um, of course, you don't really want to have a letter of credit because then if, if you do have to use that, you have to pay that back at some point in time. <laughs> so we, we don't like debt. Does the ACO, if you have a group of physicians and they decide they are going to be an ACO, mm -hmm. where does that, I mean, does that go along with the electronic piece? The government, you know, is mandating that every physician's office, every medical office be electronic. Will that ACO, will that correspond <coughs> together so they're all mm -hmm. on the same system? Um, not necessarily on the same um, EMR systems, but using the same HIE, so that you have a health information exchange of some sort that all of the doctors can tie into so that they can share their information. That's where so Sushu would tie it. That's where Sushu ties important. it, yes. Yes. Yeah. So it is very important also in becoming an ACO that we also steer the doctors to EMR systems um, because within the next few years it's going to be essential really that doctors have an EMR system in their office. So and an exchange to communicate with outside sources. Right, right. And then you know the, the local HIE within BPN, within the community, then ties into the state HIE and so on and so forth. You know, it, it builds. But it is very important to have that infrastructure. Take a look at the uh, information that I gave you, and if you have any questions afterwards, um, I'd be happy to try to answer them. So I'll let Naveen go ahead and take over. All right. Uh, do you guys want to speak briefly with joining the exchange before I start, or do you want me to introduce? Yeah. Did you want to say anything? Yes. Uh, my name is Matt Barber. I work with Gentiva Home Health, and um, we are currently using Sushu, and uh, it's been a great benefit to our to our company because. Um, we're able to receive referrals through that system 
And um, we found that the people have got, that have gotten acclimated to it um, have found it much easier to um, follow where the referrals are going. And um, we're also working on uh, being able to case manage through SUSHU as well. And uh, with me today is uh, Christy Jolkowski. She's one of the managers uh, in our office that uh, primarily works with SUSHU type situations. And, and we're able to really reduce faxes or eliminate faxes. And um, having that information go through the EMR, directly connecting to it, uh, it's the wave of the future. And we, we want to try to be at the forefront of that, Gentiva does. So we're, um, we're, we're working towards that. And uh, we're happy so far with how SUSHU's helping us to make that happen. Once again, just to introduce myself, I'm Naveen. I was going to switch that on, but uh, I just want to wait and using paper. And what the heck, electronic medical records? Let's go to paper. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's, uh, it's interesting. Are you guys scared yet? You should be. Uh, 